mi destino era mi familia. Es, esa era mi, mi meta, eran ellas. Ellas estaban aquí, esa era mi meta. Salí del de Salvador este, con un coyote en bus, en camión y a pie que cruzamos el desierto, el desierto de Arizona. El único delito, por decirlo así, es haber cruzado ilegal la frontera. What matters is that he's here now. If I was in the same spot, I would have probably done the same exact thing to be with my family. We can easily get caught up in the excitement of the day. So let's reflect a bit. Today, June 3rd, 2017, marks a milestone. Parents, guardians, and family members, you've watched your sons and daughters grow from babies to these amazing young adults. Today is a day of great pride for their accomplishments. Everyone's talking about graduation. Like, I want graduation here, I'm so ready, like, I'm done. And for me, it was more of like, I don't want graduation to get here. There has always been a sadness to it since February 10th. That's when our sleepless night started, we couldn't sleep, and we had a president that did not want immigrants here. It February 10th, weird. that was, that was... The date that dad reported himself to immigration. My mom came to the United States through my grandfather that requested a visa. Mom got papers. I was able to house off papers, but we kept traveling back because dad was still in El Salvador. I mean, Dad was there and we were here, so he had to find a way. He did cross the border, and in that trip, that's when they caught him. And, and why, why immigration enforcement? How did you get involved? My dad started in Border Patrol, and my mom and my sister both work for Citizenship and Immigration Services. So it was almost kind of family business. I had one sibling that uh, ventured out elsewhere, but uh, the rest of us, this is where we ended up. In the media, our officers get vilified a lot for breaking up families. You know, ICE officers breaking up families. That's not anybody's intention. That's not what anybody wants to do. And I don't hear that same criticism when you see other law enforcement agencies, be it DEA or Sheriff's Department or Police Department, going out and arresting somebody for committing a crime, pulling them away from their family and putting them in jail. You know, they don't get vilified for breaking up a family. Yet yeah, we do. As far as Juan Rodriguez, I don't want to get too much into case specifics. He was encountered by the Border Patrol after he illegally entered into this country in 2001. He was granted a voluntary departure order in 2002, which gives him a period of time to depart on his own. He did not do so. He did not depart. We ended up allowing him to remain in the country under order of supervision where he would report into us. That was in 2005. They've still got a removal order. So as he checks in now, if circumstances have changed, he is subject to enforcement action. But that's why we have them keep checking in. We checked in for 11 years. All we did was go and they'd be like, okay, come back in so long. That's it, basically. Like, how is it that when President Obama was the president, the period that he was the president, those eight years, we checked in and it was fine. He went and he put his face out there. He did the right thing by showing up. Last week, Immigration and Customs Enforcement carried out raids across the country. As raids for immigrants continue to sweep the country. President Donald Trump signed an executive order in January. And as the Trump administration the is cracking down on them. We are getting the bad ones out. These are bad throwing them the hell out of our The country. other 25% of those arrests were for non-violent convictions or old immigration violations. And new at 5 o'clock, a family struggling to stay together just weeks before their dad is set to be deported. 
And Lauren, these girls say their dad is not one of these so-called bad hombres who President Trump vowed to deport. He was denied temporary protection status in 2005, but stayed anyway, regularly checking in with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. But in February, I said his time was up. I was at the counselor's office most of the time that week because I told her I was scared. I went to teacher's classroom and I was like, can I just sit here and cry? He's like, everything's gonna be okay, like let's have faith. The officer came out and called dad and that's when he went inside. He was in there 10, 15, 20 minutes, but that felt like three hours. He came out with a different officer. And in Spanish, he's like, I don't want your girls to listen to this. They can go over there. We were stepping out, and then dad was like, girls, this is the thing is, I have to leave in a couple months. I, we all asked why. He's like, they said I'm not a priority to Trump's government anymore, and I have to go. As it stands now, if you're in this, this country illegally, in violation of the law, you're subject to enforcement action. Is it right to say that an agent could be lenient to someone who's checking in under an order of supervision? The individual agent can't extend that stay of removal. If we've granted a stay of removal, it has to come up to the field office director to ultimately decide if we're going to ex extend it or if it's going to expire, we're going to take enforcement action at that point. So you sign off on all those? I do. I have no right to say who deserves and who doesn't deserve to be here. Well, I would just say this, anybody who, who is here in this country it, and snuck over illegally to get in this country wants to remain in this country. They went through a lot to get here. The bottom line is you, you have to come legally. I understand that. But people that are here working hard, trying to establish something for their families, that have a clean criminal record, I don't understand why they have to leave. Well, let's put it this way. A lot of the, the terrorists and 9-11 folks came in here, they didn't have a criminal history. They just entered the country illegally. They did a lot of harm once they got here. Even the minor offenses that some people talk about, and, and I've heard some people even refer to DUI as a minor offense, I don't see it that way. You know, I, I don't like the idea of, of letting them get further down the road. Because one immigrant committed a crime, we're all criminals. No, we're all different. The jobs that many people don't want to do here, the immigrants are the ones doing it. Dad established something for himself. He works as a mechanic on his own. He sent us to good schools and he tries to provide to us with the best of the best. There are sympathetic stories out there. I mean, in my opinion, if somebody came into this country illegally, and even if they sat here for 10 years and raised a family and established all these roots, they knew they were here illegally. And if you want to put the blame on somebody for breaking up a family, I think the blame belongs on the individual who, who committed the crime to begin with. My dad is not a criminal. You've committed a criminal offense by crossing into this country illegally. He has three daughters. We're all youth citizens. We're the ones that are going to be suffering. How would they feel if I told them, okay, well, you've had 11 years with your family? I think that's enough. How has the use of order of supervision or extensions changed under this new administration? I don't think the use of them has changed at all. Those are temporary forms of relief. And the intent is that all those come to an end at some point. The priorities between the two administrations aren't 180 degree change. Really, the top priorities are, are pretty much in line. They're the same. It's the bottom folks were changed a little bit. With the previous administration, they were kind of protected and kind of off limits for the most part. They wiped that other stuff away and said, here's the immigration law. Enforce it as it's written. If that's the law, just go do your job. I think it's the fairest way to enforce the law. You don't understand it till you're in the spot. That morning, I woke up having my dad hoping I'd have my dad for as long as we could, to having my dad until June 29th. So that day, like on February 10th, the officers, they were gonna deport him in the spot, and then dad, he asked him if he could ask for one thing. You've worked extremely hard over the past four years, and you've earned a degree with distinction. The officer, He's like, what's this one thing? My daughter's graduating. Can I please stay? Like, I don't want to like crush her dream of not being there for her. They stepped outside and started talking. Hey, Daniela, 
He said, because you have a clean criminal record, I will let you go. And I will give you that. But on this date, you have to report. And I will deport you. Eso que le dicen a uno de que, que nadie se queda, eso es mentira. Me fui quedando, me fui quedando y de momento este, le pedí a Dios que me diera este, fuerza. Cuando yo corrí y alcancé al grupo, alguien más se quedó y yo no lo volví a ver más. No sé qué fin habrá tenido. Pues yo corrí la suerte de que logré llegar y reunirme con mi familia. <risa> 